Blue Origin have done it. They've successfully landed the new Glenn Booster on the landing platform for the very first time, making history as the second company to ever land an orbital class rocket booster. And if that wasn't enough, the primary payloads are destined for Mars, but they're not going straight there. It was a majestic ascent out of Launch Complex 36 with all seven BE-4s powering Glenn Stage 1 off the pad. The thrust to weight ratio was very similar to Flight 1, taking an awful long time to clear the towers, but thankfully that wasn't a bad omen as New Glenn started to pitch down range. We had to wait for this spectacular ascent though as the original launch attempt on Sunday was scrubbed to, well, pretty much everything. Clouds, rain, cruise ships in the range, GSE glitches, you name it. Blue tried again on Wednesday, but had to stand down the evening before because of an incoming solar storm. You couldn't make it up. Well, I guess you don't want to fry your spacecraft as soon as you launch them, right? But it was of course third times the charm on Thursday, and the odds were definitely in never tell me the odds favour. The reason why the landing was unsuccessful 10 months ago was because the three gimbling BE-4s failed to relight, resulting in the 60 metre tall booster losing control as it re-entered the atmosphere. Between GS-1 serial number 1 and serial number 2, the company implemented numerous upgrades, including upgrades to the BE-4's startup and shutdown sequence, which they even tested during a prolonged static fire test at the end of last month. They cleared that failure point this time with flying colours however, with a clean successful re-ignition of the three gimbling BE-4s on the first stage. Those successfully conducted the re-entry burn, fighting fire with fire, protecting GS-1 as it slammed its way back into Earth's atmosphere. And fun fact, New Glenn is so big our own D-Wise was even able to keep a track of it through the entry burn. Insane! NASA's WB-57 aerial imaging plane was able to capture some even more spectacular views as this 60 metre tall behemoth made its way back through the clouds. But then we lost it. Riding on board with the booster, we saw the legs deploy, but still, no visual on Jacqueline. At this point, it was looking almost certainly like a soft splashdown in the ocean. This was further compounded by the wide-angle views on board Jacqueline. GS-1 was headed just off to the side, as we've unfortunately seen a few times with Falcon boosters. But nope, we were just getting trolled. New Glenn performed the same flight profile we've seen time and time again from New Shepard, slowing down slightly off target, translating over to the centre spot, and touching down with a smooth, record-breaking landing on landing platform Vessel 1. New Glenn is the largest, most powerful, and dare I say most beautiful rocket to propulsively land on an ocean vessel downrange. We'll do dedicated live coverage for the return of Never Tell Me The Odds, because in about four days, landing platform Vessel 1, nicknamed Jacqueline, and support ship Harvey Stone are going to be making their way back into Port Canaveral. But of course, the landing attempt was always a secondary objective. The primary payload for New Glenn 2 is NASA's Rocket Lab-built Escapade mission, which features twin satellites heading to Mars. Originally intended to launch alongside NASA's Psyche mission as a rideshare payload, Escapade had to find another ride because Psyche was delayed to the point where its trajectory would no longer facilitate hosting the twin Mars-bound spacecraft. Blue Origin won a $20 million bid to launch the spacecraft, and they were even slated to launch on New Glenn's maiden mission. But yep, more delays meant Escapade had to be bumped yet again. If you take a look at the calendar though, we're not currently in an Earth-Mars transfer window, so how is Escapade getting to Mars? Well, following the delay to New Glenn 1, the mission team behind Escapade devised a new plan to send the spacecraft to Lagrange Point 2, a point of equilibrium in space one and a half million kilometres away, where they'll basically chill out until the next transfer window opens when they'll make their own way to the Red Planet. And to just double down on how incredible this achievement is for Blue Origin, Everybody, from Elon Musk to Gwen Shotwell to Jared Isaacman and Sean Duffy, congratulated Blue on this just... Oh my god, they actually landed the booster. I'm sure you've heard enough about the human landing system over the past two weeks, NASA's lunar landers for the Artemis program. Well, it goes without saying that this launch was crucial for Blue Origin, because New Glenn will be launching Blue Moon Mark 1, a cargo lander, and Blue Moon Mark 2, a human lander, which is currently slated to serve NASA on Artemis 5. However, you may have seen the rumours that Blue is proposing to use Blue Moon Mark 1 as an expedited crew lander, following acting administrator Duffy's calls to open up the contract. And this is actually really important for New Glenn's immediate future, because its next flight could be carrying the first Blue Moon Mark 1 to the moon no earlier than this coming January. Yeah, things are about to get very exciting. But will they make it? Stay tuned to find out. I've been Ryan Caton for NSF. Thanks for watching, and goodbye.